Dino Crisis as a survival horror game developed and published by Capcom for the PlayStation 1, released in Japan on July 1st, 1999, and in North America on August 31st, 1999, and later was released on the Sega Dreamcast in November of 1999 for America. There was going to be two different versions for the Game Boy Color, but eventually those were cancelled. The story follows Regina, a special operation agent sent with a team to investigate a secluded island research facility. Turns out, the entire place is filled with flesh-eating dinosaurs. Regina, Gale, and Rick must fight through the facility to discover its dark secrets and try to survive. Gameplay-wise, it's almost exactly like the original Resident Evil games on the PlayStation with tank controls and solving puzzles to progress through the game. I am fully aware that tank controls can be a bit of an acquired taste, however I grew up using tank controls so I never had a problem with them, but I can understand when someone brings it up as a negative for this game. The game also uses somewhat fixed camera perspective, but sometimes the camera moves with you in a 3D environment instead of pre-rendered backgrounds which are kinda neat. Just like in Resident Evil, item management is important in this game. However, I don't like how it was done. Every key item gets its own slot, which is great, but for everything else, it's kinda limited. Sure, you can combine healing items, but for whatever reason, you can't combine your ammo, and it can clog up your inventory slot, which is kind of annoying. Thankfully though, there are item boxes, but you have to use plugs to open them up and use them. The story in Dino Crisis is nothing special. It hits the basic notes from its beginning, middle, and end, but I think what makes this game special is its characters. Regina, Gale, and Rick are all very likable characters with distinct personalities. Rick is a fun-loving computer genius guy, while Rick is a very serious soldier who will do anything to get the job done. Regina is sort of the voice of reasoning when the two argue, and they argue a lot, and you get to decide who is right in that situation, which is nice because it adds some nice replay value. And you can go different routes, and it's really cool that way. Dr. Edward Kirk is a fine antagonist with a pretty decent backstory, but he doesn't have that same charm or charisma that will make him a memorable villain. I know this game came out over 20 years ago, but I don't want to get into spoilers. However, I did really appreciate the plot twist that happens towards the end and why the dinosaurs are back and why Dr. Kirk is the evil bastard that he is. The soundtrack in this game is really good, and it definitely gives you that sense of dread when you realize you don't have enough ammo to down any of these dinosaurs, and it's really good and I love it. It's definitely a very atmospheric kind of tone. And I love it a lot. Graphically, Dino Crisis looks exactly like Resident Evil. However, it uses a 3D environment instead of the pre-rendered background, which I heard was kind of a pain in the ass at that time. So when they got to Dino Crisis 2, they would end up using pre-rendered backgrounds and it was just hard to develop at that time. But it's still really cool to look at, and I think the game still holds up to the day. Graphically, this looks exactly like Resident Evil in terms of the character models, but the only difference is that they use a 3D perspective. A perspective. The graphics in this game are pretty good. They are exactly like Resident Evil in terms of the character models, however the difference is that they're in a 3D environment instead of the pre-rendered backgrounds that Resident Evil was, was known for. However, doing some research I learned that it was kind of a pain in the ass at that time, and when they went to do Dino Crisis 2 they went back to the pre-rendered backgrounds instead of the 3D environments just because it was just a pain in the ass. However, it is really cool. If you ever played Resident Evil Code Veronica on the Dreamcast, it's exactly like that, where you're moving your guy and the camera is following you. It's kind of like that, and it's still tank controls and all that stuff, but graphically, I think this looks really cool. And I just like how Regina looks in this cover. She looks 
pretty awesome. Uh, some fan art of her is pretty kick-ass too. Dino Crisis is a really good game, especially if you're into the old Resident Evil games on the PlayStation. However, if you're not a big fan of tank controls, you probably won't like this. If you are looking to play this, uh, your best bet is eBay if you can find a good price. However, if you want to play this game digitally, there is a PSN uh, thing on the PlayStation 3, and it's pretty cheap. So if you want to play this game cheapest way possible, just get it on there. And uh, yeah, I fully recommend Downer Crisis. It's an amazing game. I've never played Downer Crisis 2 or 3 or the, uh, the one on the PS2. I forget what it was called. But I haven't played uh, any other ones except just Dino Crisis 1. Let me know what you think of Dino Crisis 2 and maybe I'll check it out. Uh, however, Capcom really needs to bring this franchise back because I think this has a lot of potential in today's gaming. Like, if they remade this game in the same style as Resident Evil 2 and 3, that would just be amazing. Just seeing the dinosaurs in the RE engine, oh my god, it, was, it would be so amazing. And I, I just want to see Regina and her red hair again. Like, Regina is awesome. She's a really cool character. Uh, Rick is really cool, too. I like him a lot. And Gail, he's kind of a hard ass, but you learn to love him. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you played Dino Crisis 1, let me know down below in the comment section what you thought of this game. And uh, I will see you next time. Stay classy. Big thanks to Stuff We Play, Warp Bay, and Neachok for supporting me on Patreon. You guys are awesome.